the blue zones by dan buton the quote reads as following none of the centurions we met ever no sorry none of the centurions we met were ever on a diet and none of them were ne ne jesus christ what can i read aloud none of the centurions well none of the centenarians we met were ever on a diet and none of them were ever obese no diet yet studied works for most people says university of minnesota dr bob jeffrey you can get a diet to work for about six months and then about 90 percent of dieters run out of gas even the even the best programs are effective in the long run only for a small percentage of participants that's a bit like duh right but it needs to be stressed right most diets won't work for most people but most people what they do especially after watching videos because I've been obsessed. This has been what I've been doing over the weekend, right? It's really mean. It's really ups it's really bad. I know people get pissed off about it. But I fucking love watching um, fat cringe videos. So you you normally, if you, if you don't know what fat cringe videos are, I'll, let, I'll, I'll give you a bit of an insight. A fat cringe video is usually a clip taken from My 600 Pound Life or show a, a show around that kind of gauge or usually an interview with some sort of um, body positive lady or some sort of thing like that, right? And usually what it is is like these big heavy girls um, trying to rationalize why being big and heavy is okay and why it should be socially acceptable. And it's annoying, right? It's annoying because what it basically says is kind of like, um, it's essentially like the whole pronouns thing, right? Like no one really gives a shit about pronouns for the most part, right? No one's that really that bothered. What they're bothered about is when um, the people that are advocating for the use of pronouns want it to be passed through legislation, want it to be passed through the government, and want people to be compelled to call them by their preferred pronouns. But really what people want is just like common sense stuff, right? So if I'm talking to you uh, face to face and I happen to call you he or she, but you don't want you don't be known by another pronoun and you let me know, then it's up you it's up to you to correct me in that instance where I'm where I'm there with you face to face, right? In a kind of one to one um, exchange. The same way um some uh Samuel some Sams don't like to be called Samuels or some Samuels like to be called Sam. I don't like to be called Sam, like that kind of thing, right? But you wouldn't go around like trying to get a law passed, like saying my name is Samuel, not Sam kind of thing. It's just a bit, it's a bit, it's a bit annoying, right? It's a bit conceited, it's a bit self-righteous, it just doesn't come up come across the right way. And the same thing for these body positive women. You know, no one minds that you're fat, no one really gives a shit for the most part. People just get annoyed when you try and pass a bluff that somehow being big is, can also be healthy. Like, you know. There might be a small proportion of women out there or people in general who can be 400 pounds plus and have no health issues, right? It, it can exist. I'm not, I'm not naive to it. It's like, um, it's like the people who smoke cigarettes, right? You, we all know someone who smokes cigarettes for, for the, like, who's, we know a friend who has a parent who smokes cigarettes for fucking most of their adult life and they have absolutely no, you know, noticeable health problems that we can tell from the naked eye. Of course, there might be something going on in the inside, but for the most part, they seem fairly okay. But that doesn't mean that everyone should be got there puffing, I don't know, 30 packs a day. It doesn't make any sense. But it makes me laugh whenever I watch these videos with these uh, fat positive people or body positive people on the YouTube. Because they always state, most of them have the same sentence that they kind of, kind of go back to. Which is like, oh, I tried every diet under the sun and I realized it didn't work for me. So I'm just accepting my body for what it is. Which is, you know, proper loser mentality, right? That's proper loser mentality, like... You know, I tried to make a change with my life. I tried to succeed. It didn't work out. So I just accepted my position. It's like, come on, man. That is that, you're just giving up on life. Like, and it's no, no, I'm not giving up. I just knew that it was doing me more harm than good. What they were doing essentially was crash dieting, right? You could diet for three days or a week. And then you get so hungry, build up such an, you build up such a reserve of hunger for processed food and sugars that when you finally pass a Greg's, right? <laughs> or a Percy Ingo's, you go fucking ham. You know when you pass a Percy Ingo and they just, they just pulled out the fresh fucking rolls and cinnamon rolls and croissants and shit and um, hot pastries like the cheese and onion melt. You're like, oh, God. And the people in Percy Ingles are so nice, isn't it? Has anyone noticed that? No, most Percy Ingles I've been to, the, w the women are the, usually women that work there. Again, don't get, don't, be, don't get in your high horse. But the people that work in there are usually so lovely, like really, really lovely. They're, you know, so welcome. It feels like you're, it feels like you're going to visit your nan. And she just, she won't let you leave the house without eating something. Just fucking f pushing food down your throat. So that's the only thing that's annoying, right? It's just like, oh, I've, I've been on loads of diets and, you know, and I just can't get the weight off because I'm holding loads of water. It's like, come on, get out of here. So for the most part, diets don't work for everyone, right? But what this book basically details is that it's less about diet and more so about lifestyle habits, right? So it's about um, permanently changing your diet. And now this is something that's very, very important. A lot of people won't do because I've seen, I've seen videos of really big girls I saw this video of this one girl who was like obsessed with eating potatoes and cheese. Now, she might be a bit of a freak. 
Should I be playing out for the cameras a bit? You know what I mean? Like being a little bit of, um, you know, just for shock and awe value. But, you know, she has a boyfriend who, who seemed like fairly in shape, who kind of ate normal kind of food, like steak and vegetables. And he was trying to feed her a bit, piece of broccoli. And she was li- physically shaking and crying. Like she couldn't handle it. Oh, I can't eat the broccoli. <laughs> Imagine being a grown adult and crying because of broccoli. I remember seeing that when I was in school. You know, you'd have that kid in class who would cry because his mum put a tomato in his sandwich or something. She snuck it in there. Do you know what I mean? On some fucking incognito shit. And this woman was shaking. <laughs> she was shaking, crying about broccoli. And her boyfriend had to come over and give her that fucking boyfriend hug. It was like super pathetic, right? But for the most part, this book basically details that, which is a change that I probably would like to make. And because I, you know, I had the the other bits of protein in my diet, especially I had some bits today, some meatballs with my eggs, I had some chicken in my salad, but it basically stresses the importance of having, of only eating meat twice a week, right? Of basically eating a plant-based diet. Um, it stresses the importance of having a lifestyle that incorporates a lot of walking, a lot of lo- locomotion, right? A lot of moving around, whether it's walking a little bit extra to the next station, whether it's not getting a bus stop in front of your house. Um, whether it's taking the stairs on the way to work, like loads of locomotion stuff is always involved with it. Whether it's take, whether it's another thing that's fucking, <coughs> a lot of people don't do, whether it's carrying your shopping home. It's something I've been, I've been doing for a while, I guess because of the, of the, of the immigrant mentality, you know, in me where my parents never got buses or cabs home from shopping. Um, we'd always carry our shopping home, like fucking bags of it on either, either arm. You know what I mean, like farmers carrying shit. I mean, and and you you build up a technique of carrying bags in your hand and, and your hands are bleeding. That my hands are just permanently callous from the time I was fucking six. Then I mean, going to Atom Park and carrying fucking slabs of meat down the road. Like, uh, uh, do you know what I mean? Me and my mom just like, come on! Uh, 20 more minutes to go! Walking from Atom Park to Canyon Town, man. It's not fucking close. I tell you that. It's not close. So um, that's a habit that I've kind of built up. And you, you don't see a lot of millennials doing it nowadays. I mean, everyone's jumping into a fucking Uber with a couple of loaves of bread and a bit of cheese. Like, come on, man, walk. So loads of that kind of stuff is incorporated in there. And that's, that's most of it. So imagine, imagine having a mostly plant-based diet, right, from Monday to Friday. Being an actual plant-based food eater, not like a vegan or vegetarian where you're eating fish and chips. And, sorry, we are eating chips and cheese and shit. Not that kind of vegetarian, right, because you meet a lot of those ones, right? But I'm talking about mostly a plant-based diet. So loads of loads of legumes, loads of salads, right? Uh, lentils, loads of nice healthy healthy plant based food, tofu and all that malarkey, and then incorporating a bit of protein, you know, um, once a week, maybe twice a week, not nothing bigger than a hand size. Uh, mostly eat, mostly drinking um, water and all that kind of malarkey, staying off the fizzy pop and all that stuff. Because you don't need to say that to people, do you? Really? You don't, do you need to tell you should not be drinking fizzy drinks? You don't really see people drinking fizzy drinks anymore nowadays, do you? For the most part, you might see people drinking like energy drinks, like those off-key um, uh, bootlegs of like Red Bull and stuff. But you don't really see people walking down the street with like a bottle of Coca-Cola anymore. It's like such a taboo thing to see, isn't it? For the most part, 